good day to you and welcome back to the channel. Well, recently one of you viewers out there, his name, he calls himself Stanwich, very clever name by the way, he wrote a question asking, I'm very new to typewriters, but I'm planning to buy one. They help so much with my creative flow. Do you have any suggestions as to which one I should get? I'm a budding author, so which one would suit my purpose? That, Stan, is a great question, and I thought it would be great to talk about. What's a good typewriter to use for writing? Stay tuned. Well, first of all, I'm going to assume that if you're interested in having a typewriter to be a writer or to do serious writing, I'm assuming you're not really wanting to be a typewriter collector in the sense of getting a bunch of typewriters, getting them fixed up, or learning to do it yourself, and having a big collection, although that can be fun. But oftentimes, if your primary focus is just to be a writer, sometimes being a collector of typewriters can also be a distraction. So I'm going to assume that we're looking at a person who wants to be the owner of maybe one, perhaps only two, very few typewriters, primarily a writer and not a collector. And that's going to guide my advice here. So let's start off with the idea that if you're being a writer at a fixed location, maybe you have a home-based studio or office or a favorite place to write with, you can't really go wrong with a well-made standard typewriter. This is a 1920 Underwood 5, as an example. This is one of my favorite typewriters in my collection. It's 103 years old as of June of 2023. I love this typewriter. This was a gift from my friend Ted Monk, and it operates very well. It has a new platen, and it just types so good. It has a great action on the keys, very solid, reliable. These kind of typewriters were the kind of manual typewriters that office people and serious writers used throughout the early to the middle part of the 20th century. So a full-size standard manual typewriter is one kind that I would advise you to look at. So when we talk about manual typewriters, the keys are operated manually. You can really divide them into three categories. Standard or so-called full-size typewriters, portable typewriters, which are medium-sized and have a case so you can store them in a closet or somewhere and carry them, but they're fairly heavy, and small portable typewriters. Small portable typewriters tend to be the ones that a lot of newbies to typewriter collecting tend to gravitate toward because they're small, but they have intrinsic limitations in their design and construction and feature set that may not suit you as a serious writer. The thing about standard typewriters is the way the mechanics are designed, the linkages, the leverage you get, they're designed to use the force of your hands and fingers optimally to imprint letters on the paper, and they really do the job the best. But the downside of standard typewriters is they don't have cases, and therefore you can't easily store them somewhere safely, like in a closet, because you don't want to stack stuff on top of it and break or damage the parts. So you kind of have to find a place to put these and keep them there on a desk, for instance. Now, if you are a serious writer looking to have one good typewriter, that's probably not going to be a problem for you if you're writing from a fixed location. Because again, you'll have your writing spot, your desk, your studio office, or wherever, and you'll have your one typewriter that's going to do the job for you really well as far as helping you to channel that creative energy from inside of you onto paper in the early phases of the writing process. However, I'm not going to totally dissuade you from the idea of getting a medium-sized portable typewriter, but I will say ultra-portable typewriters or, or, or very small, lightweight portable typewriters are probably not the kind of, of machine you want to use as a serious writer. So let's look at a couple examples maybe of medium-sized portables that might also fit the bill. Amongst the medium-sized portable typewriters, one of the most highly regarded brands is going to be the Hermes, especially the Hermes 3000. This is an example of the third or the latest body style of the Hermes 3000s. The previous two body style versions were made in Switzerland. This one is made in France, and as far as I can tell 
because I own all three versions. The mechanics of the French-made Hermes 3000 is every bit the same as the Swiss-made. The difference really is aesthetics. This is more of a boxy style body, and it's plastic instead of metal on the body. And one of the reasons why these are so highly regarded is because they have a very soft, easy touch for a portable typewriter. So they're well regarded by a lot of people. Two caveats I'll throw out. First of all, not everybody likes the touch of a Hermes 3000 typewriter, and there are probably as many opinions about what's your favorite typewriter as there are typewriter collectors out there. I like the touch of these Hermes 3000s, and as far as acquiring one, which we'll talk more about later, you need to know that these are very expensive on the used market. They are highly inflated in price, and you're going to pay a premium to get a Hermes 3000 regardless of the body style. Another good performer for a medium-sized portable typewriter is going to be the Smith Corona portables from the 1950s. These are called the 5 Series or the Super 5 Series, and the model names were the Sterling, the Silent, and the Silent Super are the three common ones. This happens to be a Silent Super. You'll find them often in this kind of drab gray color. There's brown colors. There's a light blue, a couple other colors. If you're a serious writer, let me just throw this out right now. You really shouldn't be looking at the color of the typewriter as the deciding factor. I know it's like having a car. You do want to have the right color for your aesthetics, uh, but really what you should be looking at is the performance of the machine, how well it's been serviced as the primary feature, not necessarily looking at the color. These are American-made typewriters. They made them by the millions, and they're pretty common here in the United States. Because they're so common, you can often find them for a decent price. They also have a nice touch, and they have this one feature where the, the surface of the keys stays horizontal throughout the entire keystroke as you're pushing them. They're articulated linkages. So the haptics, the feel of the typewriter feels pretty good for being a rather small machine. Also these typewriters have cases. This one happens to have the preferred case which is the holiday case. It is an aluminum case covered with a leatherette and these are quite handsome, easy to carry around. So this is an option if you want to be a serious writer with one good typewriter, a silent or silent super works really well. Another portable typewriter from the mid 20th century are the Royal Quiet Deluxes, otherwise known as a QDL. So Royal has a whole line of full-size standard upright typewriters that are really great for writing with. And then they came out with these smaller machines. So these were kind of the competitor to the Smith Corona 5 series, I think, in the United States at least. A lot of people like them, some people don't. I don't like these as much as I like the Smith Corona 5 series. These tend to be a little bit more finicky with regards to your touch, your typing technique. If they're not exactly set up properly in terms of their adjustments, and if you're not using the right technique for typing with them, they will occasionally skip spaces when you're typing with them. Not all of them do that, but they tend to be a little bit more finicky in that regard than the Smith Coronas. Now, I should also mention that in the case of the Quiet Deluxe and the 5 Series Smith Coronas, as well as the uh, Underwood that I showed you earlier, they all have what is called segment shift. And what shifting is, is whether you have upper or lowercase letters, these have segment shift, meaning that when you press the shift key, the basket of type bars in here, which maybe we can show you here, drops up and down for shifting. And that's a preferred shifting method because the force required, you're using your pinky fingers, your weak fingers to shift with usually, it doesn't require much force to shift it. You're just pushing the type basket down against spring pressure, whereas a lot of other machines use what's called carriage shift. And carriage shift, when you press the shift key, it lifts the entire carriage up. The entire carriage is a lot heavier than the segment, and you're lifting the weight of it against gravity, so it's a little bit harder to shift with. That being said, though, there are some typewriters in Europe, especially the German-made Olympias, that were really good, and I want to show you one of those now. And that Royal Quiet Deluxe, by the way, came in the, this nice tweed-looking case. Quite handsome, right? Very nice. This, on the other hand, is an Olympia typewriter. These were made in Western Germany 
Remember, there used to be East Germany and West Germany during the Cold War. Well, this is a West German typewriter. This is a 1957 SM3. SM is Schreibmaschinen, which is typewriter, and Mittelgross, which is medium size or medium big typewriter. These are very handsome typewriters. You'll find them often with a German keyboard where Y and the Z are reversed on the keyboard. This is an American or Western style keyboard, the standard QWERTY keyboard. And it also has a very handsome case. If you see one of these cases with this kind of bulbous, rounded, curved shape to it, you know you're dealing with an early SM series Olympia. These have really superior mechanical build quality. The grade of metallurgy, the metals used in these machines, is really superior to probably a lot of the other American-made machines. You'll notice one thing when you go to shift this machine. That's right, it is a carriage shift. It takes more finger force to shift. You're lifting the entire weight of the carriage. They are typically more expensive than the American-made portable typewriters, but they work really well, constructed really well, and you would certainly enjoy riding on one of these. They will be more expensive, however, probably not as expensive as a Hermes 3000. They are beautiful typewriters. And like most European typewriters, the line spacing, is half line spacing, meaning you have single line spacing, one and a half line spacing, and then double line spacing, which is nice. A lot of your mid-century American portables were just one, two, and three line spacing. You didn't have that half line. If you're a writer, you might find one and a half line spacing is a really good compromise between having enough room to insert corrections or you can even type in corrections tightly between the lines or handwrite them. But also, unlike double spacing, you can fit more text on a page. So for your rough draft or your first draft typewritten, having one and a half line spacing is kind of nice. But I would certainly recommend highly one of these machines in good shape. So this was not an exhaustive summary of all the medium-sized portable typewriters by any means, but I wanted to give you a sense of what some of the popular brands are that seem to be pretty well made for serious long-form writing. But now we're going to shift away from manual typewriters completely. We've covered standard and medium-sized portables, and now we're going to get into another kind of typewriter that is like a manual typewriter in the sense it has the type bars, the little hammers that come up and strike the paper, but they're electrified. It's electric assisted. And I call these type bar electrics. Those little hammers are called type bars. These are electric assisted. And one of the most popular lines of electrified typewriters in the 19, starting in the late 50s up through the 60s and into the 70s was made by Smith Corona. And by the time you get into the 1970s, Smith Corona was known as SCM, Smith Corona Marchant. And this is an example of an SCM made typewriter that's branded as a singer, yes, the sewing machine company. Uh, Smith Corona made a number of typewriters for Sears and for Montgomery Wards and some of the other department stores. This is an example of one that's not a Smith Corona brand, but it is Smith Corona made. These were known generically as the six series typewriters. They came after the five series. Let me plug this in. So one of the things that's really interesting about these electric typewriters versus manual if you are a writer, is the ease with which you can type. With a manual machine, it is the velocity and force of your fingers that drives the type slug into the paper to make a good imprint. Whereas with these electric typewriters, it's really like a mechanical computer keyboard. You only have to press the key down maybe half a centimeter, like five millimeters, and the force and speed of your fingers has nothing to do with how hard it types. So these are like typing with a manual or mechanical computer keyboard is the best way I can describe it. These are really well suited for writing with. This one makes a little bit of noise, by the way, because it has a drive belt that is making a little bit of noise. These came in two general features. This kind of typewriter, electric typewriter, has a manual carriage return. That is, you have to manually 
return the carriage with the carriage return arm just like you do with a manual typewriter. But they also made versions of these that didn't have this arm at all. And instead, right here, they had a button. And when you press the button, it electrically motorized, whoosh, returns the carriage very swiftly and fastly. And some of them are almost violent in their carriage return. But these are really good typewriters to consider for serious writing because you can write for hours at a time and get very little finger fatigue because you're not using the kind of muscles and speed and velocity and force that you would with a manual typewriter completely. So you can get a good quality imprint with a very light touch and it's well suited for long form typing. These are set up with full tabulators and a lot of other features like that. This one is one, two, and three line spacing. Later on, in the later six series, they did start making one and a half line spacing typewriters. These also have auto repeat on the space bar, the X, the period, and also the underline or underscore and hyphen. So those were automated or repetitive keys so you can do like ellipses or dotted lines or underscores a lot quicker and more efficiently. So I would definitely have you look at a type bar electric, an electrified manual typewriter is a really great option for a serious writing tool. They're a little bit bigger than a medium sized portable manual machine. The footprint is probably about the same as a standard full size typewriter but they're not quite as tall. They're more, they're basically like a medium sized portable, but they're electric. They have a cord. So definitely look into one of these Smith Corona electric type R machines. So the electrified type bar electric machines, like I just showed you with the Singer, the Smith Corona SCM made, are electromechanical. A motor, electric motor, turns a drive belt, and then everything else after that is mechanical. It would be incomplete in discussing efficient writing typewriters to not include the venerable IBM Selectric. The Selectrics were not electronic typewriters, they're electromechanical. They have a motor, drive belt, and a very complicated mechanism. They came in three generations. This is the first generation, just called the Selectric. The more common versions are the Selectric 2 and the Selectric 3. This first version, you notice, is much more curvy and rounded. These first generation ones did not have the built-in lift-off correction capability that the 2 and the 3 had. But the availability of ribbon cartridges going into the future is going to be perhaps an issue, especially with the Selectric 3. It's so-called bicycle style cartridge is less common now, harder to get than the Selectric 2 cartridge. There are several things though to know about when you're buying a Selectric. First of all, they're very heavy. They weigh almost 40 pounds. And secondly, these typewriters were designed by IBM with a particular business model in mind. And their business model was service contracts. So if you don't use these typewriters very much, if they sit around, there's a lot of greases and lubricants that will harden up, turn to glue, and the machine won't work, and you'll have to get it serviced. On the other hand, if you use it a lot, there are certain parts in here that really were designed to wear out. So maintenance is an issue. Luckily, there are still a number of IBM trained technicians around the country that can service these, but just know these are a little more maintenance intensive than your type bar machines. That being said, what they offer you are interchangeable type ball elements. And they had dozens of different type balls or typefaces or what you might call fonts available for these machines. You'll notice the carriage, there's no moving carriage. The print head mechanism, the carrier, that carries the ribbon and the type ball is what actually moves in these machines. They have powered return. Just press a button. They are very efficient typewriters for serious writing. This is the reason why they were used in business offices for a lot of years because they do the job really well. This is a rather compact size though. This is the smallest or narrowest version they made. The typical Selectric 2 or 3 that you're going to find out there is going to be wider, boxy and square, 
probably a little bit heavier even. And most likely it's going to need servicing before you can rely upon it as a reliable writing tool. But if you get one of these, you can also collect some of the type balls and have yourself a number of different typefaces or fonts available to use with them. So IBM Selectrics are certainly a viable writer's tool. Maybe one of the best writer's tools ever created as far as typewriters for writing efficiency, but just know they can be expensive and also they can be maintenance intensive. They're not necessarily well suited for the amateur to work on uh, without some specialty tools, but if you're the person who just wants to write and not tinker with typewriters, I'll point you to the direction of finding one of these that's already been well serviced by a reputable repair shop. Get one of those, you'll be happy with it. These though are no way portable. Sit it down in some location, leave it there, and enjoy writing with it. The IBM Selectrics were very complicated mechanically. They were probably the most complicated mechanical typewriter mechanism ever built. And as a consequence, they were relatively expensive for IBM to build them. But later on, in around 1985, was probably the last year that the Selectrics were, were made. About that time, maybe a little bit before then, IBM had already started transitioning to a new typewriter technology that we now call daisy wheel typewriters because of a round plastic print wheel that has the type elements on it. The Daisy wheel typewriters are electronic instead of electromechanical. They use stepper motors that turn the print wheel very quickly and efficiently to the right letter. They use stepper motors that move the print carrier back and forth, advance the paper, etc. A lot of different companies made these electronic daisy wheel typewriters and in, throughout the 80s and into the 90s they started morphing into more like word processors. Because they were electronic they started putting things like spell check dictionary memories in them. This is a brother daisy wheel typewriter. This is an SX4000. SX4000. Brother made these, Smith Corona made these, the IBMs were called wheel writers, and there is a, a lot of other brands of these daisy wheel typewriters out there on the market. Brother, just a few years ago, quit manufacturing them, but there are still new old stock machines available online, even places like uh, Amazon. So the good things and the bad things about these, well, they're all plastic. They're pretty lightweight, actually, because they're plastic, but you might be able to hear the little creaky body sounds. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's probably an aesthetic nuisance. What these things do really well, though, is they print the text very, very precisely and accurately, just like an IBM Selectric. In fact, I would argue, maybe even better than an IBM Selectric. It's a very simple design. The one thing that you have to decide for yourself if this is the typewriter for you is there is a delay between pressing the key. Did you hear that little delay? Maybe a half a second or so? When you press the key, it's just telling a computer board, I press the key and the computer board has to process that and then drive the stepper motor for the print wheel and hit the hammer to drive the, the little letter into your ribbon and into the paper. So there is some processing going on in the background. There is a little delay. So th that can drive people batty sometimes when you're using these as you're typing. The delay between hitting the key and actually hearing it can sometimes not work well for you. But having said that, these produce professional letter quality type very well, very precisely, probably the most precise imprint you can get on a typewriter at all. And you can buy these new for a few hundred dollars online still. This is certainly a viable writing tool. I would not dissuade anybody from getting one of these. One of the other nice things about these daisy wheel typewriters is uh, you can often get them in different size character sets. So you can get them in 10 characters per inch, 12 characters per inch, or even like this Quadro 15, 15 character per inch typeface. Well, this was kind of a whirlwind tour around the world of the different kinds of typewriters, manual, electromechanical, and electronic, that might be suitable for long-form serious writing. Having said that, 
Just going out on Craigslist or on eBay and buying yourself a typewriter is often not the best solution. The principal reason being that it's like finding a car in an old barn. It may have nice bones, but it's going to need a lot of work before you can rely upon it as your daily driver. And for this reason, especially if you don't want to be a collector of half-broken machines and have to learn to fiddle with them, if your real concern or interest is writing, you want to expand all your creative energies on writing and not on learning to tinker, I recommend the most important thing is to find a reputable typewriter repair shop in your region, your area, or your state. Sometimes you'll have to drive a few hours to find a shop like that. Find a shop that has a selection of typewriters, and I encourage you to try out a typewriter from every category that I've mentioned. Find some really nice standard typewriters, your Underwoods, your big Royals, like the Royal Tens, the Royal KMMs, KHMs, and all those big machines. Try out some medium-sized portables like your Smith Coronas, your Olympias, your Hermes 3000s. And then try a Daisy Wheel typewriter and a Selectric and see which one really fits the bill. My recommendation, first of all, is to figure out what kind of typewriter you want. Which one will work the best for you for long-form writing that fatigues you the least and also inspires you to sit down to write. Once you've decided what that machine is, then look for a version of that machine that's been properly serviced, is in great shape, ready to go, and suits your needs. Well, I hope this gave you some good ideas as to how to get started finding that one great typewriter to use for serious writing. And again, I would love to hear from you. Drop a note down below, please. We'll have a discussion about typewriters and writing, and also, please support this channel. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And until next time, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.